Welcome to our look at Luther's small catechism. This is lesson number 22. Today we're going to be looking at the work of Jesus Christ as we continue to study the second article of the Apostles' Creed. Let's review that. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. Let's define some of these words that are really important when we look at the work of Jesus and that show up quite frequently in Scripture. Define the following words according to their common usage. The first word is redeem. The word redeem means to buy back or also to set free from slavery. So Jesus redeemed us from slavery. We're going to look at how and from what he did that for us. And then our second word we want to uh, define is the word ransom. Ransom is a pi price paid to redeem someone. So ransom and the word redeem go together. Number two. The Bible tells us that by nature we are lost and condemned creatures, slaves of sin, death, and Satan. According to the following passages, what has Jesus done and with what did he do this? Let's turn to Ephesians 1 verse 7. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus redeemed us, and how did he do that? He redeemed us with the price, the ransom price, was his life, was his blood. Matthew 20, verse 28 says, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So what did Jesus do? Jesus' ransom, the price that he paid, his life, was sufficient for everyone. It wasn't just for some people, it was for everyone. Number three, Martin Luther wrote, Christ has redeemed us with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. Why did Luther use the following words to describe Jesus' blood and death? Why did Luther use the word holy? Well, the blood of Jesus was perfect because he is the perfect son of God. His blood is precious because it alone could pay the price for our redemption. And of course, Jesus was innocent. He had an innocent death because he didn't die for his own sins. He died for the sins of you and me. He died for the sins of the world. Number four, read the following passages. What does it mean that Jesus has redeemed us from sin? Psalm 103 verse 10 says, the Lord does not treat us as our sins deserve. So when we talk about being redeemed from sin, it means I'm set free, you are set free from the guilt and punishment of sin. And then Romans 6 says, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So we're no longer slaves to sin, we're slaves to righteousness. In other words, I'm set free from sin's power over me. And now I live in the kingdom of God. Number five, read the following passages. What does it mean that Jesus has redeemed us from death? Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Jesus sets us free from eternal death. That is, he sets us free from hell and gives us eternal life. He gives us heaven. And then Daniel 12 says, Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, 
others to shame and everlasting death. So what does it mean that Jesus has redeemed us from death? For the believer, death is but a sleep until we awake anew in heaven. Number six, read the following passages. What does it mean that Jesus has redeemed us from Satan? First John, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And then we have to ask ourselves, well, if Jesus redeemed us from the devil's work, what is the devil's work? Jesus has set us free from the devil's accusations. He accuses us of not following God's law. He accuses us and says, God, you got to send that person to hell because they're our sinner. Jesus came to destroy that accusation and to say, I have paid that price for him or for her. And then James 4, verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So Jesus has redeemed us from Satan so that we have the power to overcome Satan's temptations. Of course, only by Jesus' power. Number seven, agree or disagree. Today's society serves as an accurate commentary on Jesus' words, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. I don't know what more I could say other than to say I agree with that statement. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Number eight, what will the doctrine of redemption mean to you when your sins trouble and terrify you, when you attend the funeral of a faithful loved one, or when you are battling temptations? You and I have been set free from sin's punishment so that all who die in the Lord have an eternal life that is waiting for them because of Jesus. He has set them free from death. So when our sins trouble us, we go to the Lord knowing that he forgives. When we attend the funeral of a loved one who is a believer, we rejoice that they have been set free from the pains of this world and now are in heaven with Jesus. When we're battling temptations, I can go to Jesus and ask for his help, and he will help me overcome temptation. What does Luther have to say? Let this article then be summarized in this way. The little word Lord simply means as much as Redeemer, that is, the one who rescued us from the devil to bring us to God, from death to bring us to life, from sin to bring us temptation, and now keeps us safe where he has brought us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you have set us free from sin, death, and the devil until we enjoy a perfect and eternal life with you in heaven. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to use our freedom to glorify your holy name. Amen. Our homework for next time, memorize the second article of the Apostles' Creed, and if you are able, also memorize Martin Luther's explanation to it. Until we meet again, may God bless you.